this talk on pediatric limb lengthening, which I believe is the missing link. All the pediatric orthopedic conferences, one sees very little material on limb lengthening, but we can see that there is a vast number of kids who present to us not only with deformities, but also with limb shortening, which is likely to progress. And hence, pediatric limb lengthening is a favorite subject of ours, and we have a lot of experience over the last 28 years. So we begin with the seven golden rules of lengthening, which were espoused by Professor Elizaro in the CORR volume 238 in 1989. This described a series of animal experiments in which these seven golden rules in great detail. They consist of stable fixation using whichever method of external fixation and a traumatic corticotomy which preserves the periosteum and appropriate latency a rate of distraction which is not exceeding one millimeter a day typically a rhythm of distraction which breaks up the distraction forces into small bits and preserving the vascularity and function when these principles are followed we can be assured of getting successful limb lengthening we also know from the work of professor elizaro and recently from the work from semmelweis university and that of in collaboration with Professor Simpson from Edinburgh that the young muscles and tendons which are usually the structures which resist limb lengthening are most amenable to lengthening at a tender age as can be understood intuitively and therefore limb lengthening is much easier at a younger age. The other reason to understand is that when the children are younger their growth is occurring at a much higher rate close to the distraction amount. One millimeter per day equals 1000 microns a day. And in children at the age of two or three years of age, the normal growth may be occurring at several hundred microns a day. So we are close. But in adults, as the child enters teenage years and adulthood, the growth of the tissues may become almost static or be a few microns a day. And therefore, the child is already geared up to lengthening and therefore they respond well at an earlier age. We can calculate the leg length difference at maturity using the Paley's multiplier method. Here the chart shows that young girls at the age of three years have a multiplier of two. That is whatever discrepancy is present at age three years will double that at maturity. In boys, the multiplier is two at the age of four years. And this helps us to decide the amount of lengthening needed and the fact that the children could be better off lengthening. So let me give you a few examples. The majority of the instances of childhood limb shortening along with deformities is caused by post osteomyelitis growth. And here is this young lady at the age of 11 years with 14 centimeters of shortening of her humerus. We applied the LRS fixator <clears throat> and lengthened it through the mid, mid shaft of the humerus. Over a period of time to improve the stability, we added a pin as you can see. And here she is with equal arm length, which is almost 97% lengthening with good function maintained in the point. Here is this young lady with post osteomyelitis growth arrest in both the ulna and the radius. The forearm is shorter than the other, and the radius is shorter than the other. So we perform the lengthening with a percutaneous osteotomy in the radius and the ulna. In this young lady using carbon fiber rings and titanium pins, which is which makes the fixator sufficiently light and easy to tolerate. The children can go to school, and they can perform their day-to-day -day activities, and it is not cumbersome. Uh, troublesome. Uh, on the X-ray on the left, you can see the distal radial corticotomy done through the wider metaphyseal bone in the distal radius, and a proximal ulnar corticotomy done through wider metaphyseal bone in the ulna at the proximal end. Oh, with passage of time, now the distal radio ulna joint relationship has been restored with almost seven centimeters of radial lengthening and the ulna has also been lengthened to increase the And here she is at the end of the period where both forearms are equal and the joint is reconstituted and the range of motion in the forearm. Again, 
sequelae like these can lead to growth arrest of the physial arrest. Here, this young lady has a physial arrest on the medial side, which leads to significant varus deformity. So, we need to perform not only the deformity correction, but also physial bar resection. Child. These series of photographs explain how we resect. We remove a triangular fragment of bone in order to access the growth plate and perform resection of the physial bar, fill it up with either fat or cement, which we use in this case, put the fragment back in place with the help of screw and distract at the level of the lower osteotomy, lengthening as well as correction of her deformity. Lengthening was also performed at the upper femoral end and of course fixation in the tibia to prevent problems in the neck. And here she is with, a, with some amount of over lengthening that has been performed as well as over correction of the deformity which is likely to rebound. Deformity correction is needed sometimes in severe deformities like this young lad who had a gap nonlinear at the upper end of the tibia which led to overgrowth of the fibula with rotation. The feet were pointing backwards and the link was shorter. So the Elizar fixate here helps us to achieve lengthening through the distal tibia which undergoes a gradual derotation. In the proximal end, we distracted the gap and used his opposite fibula to fill up the gap as the bones were very narrow. Here he is with a human looking limb with the feet pointing in the right direction and the gap non-union has been filled up with his own fibula and the length has been achieved to equalize. This is a young lady with post osteomyelitis, <clears throat> destruction of the radius, just the nubbin of the distal present. In the first instance, we put on the Elizaro fixator to distract the forearm apart and ulnar osteotomy helps to correct the significant bow the distal radio ulnar relationship we have tried to improve and in the second stage we resect this what seems like a fibrous tether or an unlog and then insert a fibular graft with multiple holes with bone grafting to help and here she is with a reconstituted radius unfortunately the radius collapsed to this less than perfect reconstitution of the distal radial nerve joint, but she has good function and pure. This is an example of a child treated with mother's non grafting. She presented to us at the age of two years with this gap in the lower end of the tibia with open And here you can see we've tried to correct her deformities at its very tender age by performing a bone transport. The bone transport worked for a certain extent. Then we had to use a mother's fibula to fill up the distal tibial gap. This is one year after the final result where you can see the tibias. As the child grew older, the growth arrest led to this further discrepancy between the tibia and the fibula for which we used a, a fibular temporary epiphysiodiosis screw. We had to perform lengthening at two or three stages. Here you can see a proximal tibial lengthening with deformity correct and uh, again after a few years here she is growing and we have at the age of 16 years she has got a little residual deformity with valgus which we also corrected with the help of a final limb lengthening performed in the upper with correction of the valgus deformity and very good appearance from the age of two years until the age of 16 at skeletal maturity, four surgeries have done the job and retained her knee and ankle range of motion. Vascularized fibular also be used. This young lad had infected uh, radius with osteomyelitis, we resected all the infected bone, use ABC. Put on the Elizaro fixator to reconstitute the distal radial nerve joint and then used a microvascular fibular graft with a, with a, with a skin island to complete his deformities. And here he is with full resolution of his. Lengthening with significant deformity correction is often needed in children with chronic osteoma. Like this young lady who has got very significant valgus in the lower tibia due to uh, growth arrest. The physis is completely closed now. So our task is the deformity as well as lengthen, which we have done. You can see the direction of the motors in the x-ray on the left, which is necessary. A mild amount of lateral is needed. 
and this is her correction and equal leg lens looking straight this is young lad with a growth uh, arrest due to osteomyelitis he's gone undergone spontaneous fusion with the knee in 90 degrees of flexion he performed a corticotomy at the supracondylar level and placed the hinges so that we would get some length along with correction of the deformity and ensured that he had a little anterior translation which mimicked a mild fixed flexion deformity which is beneficial in knee arthrodesis and here is the result this young lad has a very significant valgus and procurvatum deformity due to growth arresting which has been corrected with the help of the elizaro fixator you can see lengthening and deformity gradually like so in the first stage to give him a reasonably good result he will get a second stage of lengthening sometimes required in children who this child has a gap non-union in the femur after multiple surgeries the bone transport as you can see there's a lot of metal wear there but the small fragment can also be lengthened and brought down the additional tibia and this is her result she has achieved almost equal leg length the femur gap has been filled up and has healed now coming to congenital anomalies which are indeed a more difficult and uh, challenging situations to Let's talk about radial club hand. Radial lengthening is sometimes required. Rarely the radius is present, but is short, as in this young lad with the manus valgus. Uh, uh, so we have just performed the distal radius, which is a reasonably simple lengthening. Them equal, uh, you know, length of bones and very good correction of the deformity. But when the radius is completely absent, we may need to perform an ulnar lengthening. This young lady had a centralization and she had a recurrence of deformity as does typically happen in these instances. And therefore, we have performed a deformity from the proximal and the distal ulna as was the wish of the parents that the forearm be at least improved in appearance and almost equal in length, which is what we have in our instance. And the forearm now looks reasonably similar to the other one at first glance. Which is what the parents. Ulnar club hand presents with ulna and dislocation of the radial head proximally, as in this talented youngster who is about 10 years of age who came to us with this 8 centimeters of proximal radius jutting out like this. So we use the TSF fixator to correct his deformity. We lengthened his ulna, we straightened out his radius with an osteotomy, and then ensured that we translated the ulna, distal ulnar fragment at the lengthening site in the distal radius fell into the proximal radio ulnar joint and here he is with full reconstitution of his proximal radio ulnar joint and almost equal lens posterior medial is a is a rare congenital anomaly which is benign in nature presents with apex posterior medial bowing in which the deformity resolves but the shortening increases so we do choose to perform lengthening at an early age like this young 15 month old boy who had a middle lengthening, which was very well tolerated in hardly three and a half months he has achieved 3.5 centimeters is happily fixator went on to do well and then from the second stage lengthening 11 years like so to the proximal end to give him leg length. Congenital pseudoarthrosis of the tibia which is a rare and not so benign condition which also has shortening as one of the important in so we need to perform limb lengthening this is a young child who's had several surgeries in the past he has a short limb so in this version of our treatment for pseudoarthrosis we have performed an open resection inserted an im rod used periosteal and iliac crest bone grafting as well as performed lengthening through a proximal physial jiggly saw corticotomy subficial corticotomy to length like so here he is with equal lens and his deformity is complete fibular can present in various ways this is young lad at the age of five years with five centimeters of shortening so we chose to perform but the fibula is completely present 
he only has an absent ray, an absent last toe. We are lengthening in the first stage. In the second stage, we also performed a correction of his subtalar fusion and corrected the hind foot deformity to bring it out of valgus like so and brought the fibula back in relation to the tibia tibia lengthening in this manner to give him leg lengths. Congenital femoral deformity or congenital femur is a very difficult condition which can present with dramatic amounts of shortening. This is a paley grade 1 CFD but if you notice the acetabulum is shallow and separate like a dega osteotomy in this child which was done using grafts from the fibula. The tibia was lengthened in the in the second stage, we lengthened the femur uh, like, uh, to a modest amount, which allowed her to retain knee motion. In the third stage, she went on after about five more years at the age of 14. She went on to get her last lengthening, uh, um, which gave her almost equal leg lengths, uh, like so. We always use a flexible IM rod at the end of lengthening to prevent a refractory. Finally, I would like to give examples of extensive limb lengthening that we perform in dwarfism for um, A, which is the commonest form, but some hypochondroplasia as well. These kids grow up to the height of 4 foot 8 inches. So we perform bilateral double level tibia lengthenings in him in order to, and we monitor the neurological function at all times to ensure. And here he is with straight and much longer limbs, which allows him better. Achondroplasia is the commonest form of short limb dwarfism in which the children usually do not grow beyond 3 foot 1 inches in height. They are the ones that benefit the most from lengthening. This is a doctor's uh, daughter whom we started lengthening at the age of 7 years, the age at which she presented with a cross lengthening method, two levels in the tibia. Tumor, and she achieved 12 and a half centimeters in the tibia and tumor. And then the other limbs were like so. And finally, the arms are also lengthened to restore the proportions between the upper and the lower extremities, which is important for perineal hygiene and can prevent and correct a thoracic kyphos deformity, which develops. And here she is with her dad. And uh, they're significantly happy with the lengthening. She's a medical graduate now. She can go about uh, in society as a short normal rather than as a dwarf and can function well. The caveat for all surgeons is that a lot of experience is necessary to be able to perform these well. And like Professor Elizarov used to say, if you do it right, there are no complications. Though it may seem like a tautology, it is indeed true that one has to follow the techniques properly. One has to ensure that the children are free from pain in order to achieve very good limb lengthening in the group. So we, I finally conclude with these tips. We evaluate the leg length difference carefully. We estimate the difference at maturity. We ensure that the most experienced surgeon treats the younger kids. We start early when possible. Preparatory surgeries may be needed to stabilize joints in the initial stages, correct contractures and deformities. And we always prefer to perform two smaller lengthenings than one long lengthening. And we combine basic orthopedic principles in order to achieve the goals that we have set for the child. At Thank you for your attention.